Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą, nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu, ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Kujawsko-Pomorska Szkoła, witamy ponownie. Przed nami kolejna lekcja, tym razem lekcja języka angielskiego w naszym studiu, w naszej sali lekcyjnej. Jest już pani Ola Kowalska. Pani Olu, cóż to za bukiet? Ja słuchajcie, przyniosłam dzisiaj, bo tu wszyscy przynoszą różne rekwizyty, więc ja dzisiaj też coś mam. Takie dwie rzeczy, a będę mówić dzisiaj o Wielkiej Brytanii i Republice Irlandii. Jakieś pomysły z czym to jest związane? Wiecie w ogóle co to jest? Co prawda wybrałam sobie taką wersję tej rośliny, która nie jest tak bardzo kująca, bo to jest oset, tylko to jest oset, po angielsku to się nazywa star, star thistle. To jest oset, który nie kuje, bo niestety ten, który kuje, a próbowałam go dzisiaj rano zdobyć, pokonał mnie niestety, więc wybaczcie. Dlaczego to przyniosłam? To taka pospolita roślina, wszyscy chcą się tego pozbyć. Po co to jest? Słuchajcie. To jest symbol Szkocji. Niewiele ludzi sobie z tego zdaje, że właśnie tak sprawę, że to właśnie taka prosta e, roślinka, którą możemy spotkać też u nas i e, uważana za chwast jest symbolem Szkocji, a z kolei ta druga roślina. Ja wiem, ja wiem. Ja wiem. To <grym> jest symbol polskiego rosołu. E, nie, ona nie miłosiernie słuchajcie śmierdzi, bo jakby to jest por, e, po angielsku lik. E, to też jest roślinny symbol. E, innego troszeczkę e, kraju i chciałabym, żebyście posłuchali i pod koniec powiedzieli mi, jaki kraj ta roślinka symbolizuje. Ja ją dzisiaj oczywiście zużyję e, na jakąś potrawę, żeby e, jej nie wyrzucać. Pozwólcie, że ją odłożę trochę dalej, bo po prostu mnie ten zapach zabije. Ok, so we haven't seen for a while, like a month or so. And today I'm going to be mainly speaking English because I'm addressing my lesson uh, to students who are extremely interested in English and plan on to take uh, part in English language competitions, especially in konkurs przedmiotowy z języka angielskiego organized by Kujawsko uh, Pomorskie Kuratorium Oświaty. So if you want to take part in it and if you are in class 7 or class 8 of primary school, enjoy the lessons and join me every week at the same time. Apart from next week, because next week I'm on a leave, I'm planning uh, some holiday. So join me at 12 o'clock every week on Wednesday uh, to take a look at my lessons and maybe to learn something, hopefully to learn something. Okay, so what we are going to talk about today? As I mentioned before, we're going to talk about some basic stuff connected with uh, English speaking countries. And you know, there are loads of English speaking countries in the world. Like, for example, I'm going to talk about six of them, but today I'm going to talk actually about two of them, but one of them comprises of three. So actually I'm going to talk about four today. So the first country, you, the flag of uh, which you can see is Australia. This one is Canada. This is the Republic of Ireland. Uh, this is New Zealand. The USA, which you probably know best. And the last but not least flag is the Union Jack, the flag of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and that's what I'm going to focus on today. I'm going to focus on uh, the United Kingdom and on the Republic of Ireland. I'm going to give you some basic information about these countries, which might be like really, really useful in the future. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the United Kingdom. What actually is it? Actually, the United Kingdom are four countries. First one is England. Second one is Scotland. We also have Wales and Northern Ireland, okay? The flag looks like that. This flag is called the Union Jack, and it's not a simple flag because it consists of three flags like put on each other so that we get uh, this uh, nice pattern. Okay, and let's have a look at the map. So first of all, now actually we had a little bit of technical problems so we can't see some capitals, but I will uh, make it work for the next lesson. We have a map here. So if you look at the yellowish, orangish um, color here, okay, 
This is actually the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom consists of two parts. This one, this big island here, which is Great Britain. Also the Outer Shetland, uh, Shetland Islands, Outer uh, Hebrides and Orkney Islands. And also a bit of the island of Ireland, this northern bit, which is called Northern Ireland, uh, which has been a part of Great Britain since uh, 1921. So we're going to talk about these countries first, because this is actually what the United Kingdom is. So as I mentioned before, United Kingdom is England, the capital of England is London, Wales, the capital of Wales is Cardiff, Scotland, the capital of Scotland is Edinburgh, and Northern Ireland, the capital of which is Belfast. You can't see it, but I will show you here. Belfast, okay? Don't confuse it with Dublin, because Dublin is the Republic of Ireland. We're going to talk about it later. So let's have a look at the Union Jack. Look, uh, look at this flag. So you can see that the Union Jack are actually three flags, yes? Three crosses. All these crosses are connected with patron saints of the countries uh, that comprise, uh, that, cons uh, that the United Kingdom comprises of. So first one is the English cross, which is the cross of St. George. It's a red cross on a white background. Then we've got the cross of St. Andrew, which is Scottish. And it's a white cross on blue background. And then the last one, we've got cross of St. Patrick, which is a red uh, cross on a white background. And if you put all these crosses kind of on each other, on top of each other, you get the whole pattern of the United Kingdom. But you may ask me, okay, how about Wales? Why isn't Wales on the, on the slug? Actually, I think like Wales has been a part of uh, the whole kingdom of England for the, long, for, for the longest amount of time. So maybe that's because it, uh, how it is. And Wales also has actually two flags. One of them is also a flag connected with a saint, St. David, and one of them is their national flag, uh, which I'll talk about later. Okay, so let's look at the United Kingdom and the first part of it, the biggest one, England. Okay, I've put on a few symbols here. Uh, if you look at the first one here, we have lions. A uh, lion is kind of uh, a, how to say, animal symbol of England uh, because even one of the kings of England was called the Lionheart, Richard the Lionheart. So this, this represents courage. Then we have this cross, which you have seen before. This is the cross of St. George, and St. George is the patron saint of England. And then you've got this building, which you probably know very well. It's Buckingham Palace. And uh, you, can, you can see uh, it, I think, is the most popular building in London, apart from the London Island and the West, uh, Westminster, so you can see it quite often. Then you've got like a collage here, which are all the most important places in London. Here uh, on top of it, you've got the city, which is the uh, kind of banking uh, uh, district of London. Then, and then we have uh, Big Ben Tower and uh, Westminster. Here is Trafalgar Square with the column of Nelson, Horatio Nelson, because that was one question. What was the name of the admiral who uh, is standing on the column? And it was Horatio Nelson. Then you've got the London Eye, which is the biggest tourist attraction in London. And Tower Bridge. Mind it, this is not London Bridge. This is Tower Bridge. Okay? It's called Tower Bridge because it's next to, next to the tower, uh, a stronghold, uh, a castle uh, in London. Okay? And here I've put uh, some money. Actually, we've got only a few pounds here. When you see, you can see the head of the Queen of England, Elizabeth II. So this is English money, pound, and also some coins, but then the rest is a euro, uh, because we're going to be talking about Ireland also, and they've got different currency there. And the symbol of rose. Rose is a flower symbol of England. And in the past, there was even a war of roses. Uh, the War of Roses, which I'm going to talk about maybe in some time, like in a month or so, so you can learn something about history of uh, England. And this is a very important flower for the British because uh, it represents them. Okay, so let's recapitulate. The capital of England is, England, uh, the capital of England is London. The population of England, I think it was a census of 2019, it's 55.98 million of people, so quite a lot. The longest river of England is the Thames, and it flows through London, so you, can, you probably know this river. 
the mo motto of England is God and my right. In Polish, it's Buki moje prawo. So this is, you know, the, they feel very, very sure of themselves and they feel that they can rule the world and they used to rule the world a bit. Uh, if you go back in history to the times of the Commonwealth, England was a real empire in the times of Queen Victoria. Uh, like half of the world was English. Patron side of England is St. George and I mentioned it before. The National Day of England is the 23rd of April and this is the day of St. George so it's like a name day of England. The animal symbol is the lion because of the courage and the flower symbol is a red rose. So this is the sources. By the way, I've got loads of sources. So some of these sources that I took the information from will appear uh, at the bottom of uh, each slide, but some of them are at the end because I couldn't squeeze them in here. So uh, let's look at some famous places which often appear on competitions and you must be kind of aware of them and know where they are, what do they stand for, what do they represent, what actually they are. So think about it, maybe you will feel encouraged to have a look, to go online and to have a look at more uh, pictures and photos. Okay, so let's look at the first, Stonehenge. I'm sure you've heard about it. Stonehenge is like a big circle of stones on Salisbury Plain in England. Um, and we actually were not sure what it is. Some people say it's a burial site. Burial, it means that they used to bury bodies there, so like a graveyard for something like that or it can be a calendar or maybe it was a temple a temple is like a church but you know church is kind of church refers to catholic religion and to protestant religion to christianity so temple is like a more general term so this was some kind of temple and the amazing thing about it is those huge stones which were carried to this place to salisbury plain in some way that we are not really sure about. Probably they were uh, brought uh, on the rivers uh, on some boats, but we're not sure about them because they are really, really huge and they are not natural stones of this area. So it's very interesting story, still a mystery. It looks very nice in the picture, but in reality, it's, you know, all around it, there is a fence, but go online, explore it, have a look at it. It's very interesting. The next thing you probably heard about are White Cliffs of Dover. White Cliffs of Dover are the cliffs, the shore of England, uh, that you see when you come from France uh, through, uh, actually across the English Channel. The English Channel is a name, an English name for uh, Canal La Manche in Polish, right? So you can see these cliffs and they are beautiful. Uh, they are made of uh, a very special mineral. Uh, it's chalk, right? It's white, so you can uh, you can recognize it. Uh, it's uh, it's it's like very unique. You don't see such a thing in the world. Okay, so there, this is a chalk cliff, and uh, go online and explore some more. And then, uh, I don't know if you heard about the fact that England, actually Great Britain, was at some point in its history a part of the Roman Empire. Uh, the invasion started in 40, uh, actually in 54 BC, uh, Julius Caesar tried to get there, but he couldn't, it was too difficult, the weather was horrible, uh, the climate was horrible, everything was horrible in England and it was very muddy, so he failed, but in 43 AD, uh, it, which means after Christ, uh, there was a successful invasion of England and the Romans stayed there for 400 years. So that's quite a long, uh, lot of time and they've got a lot of, they left a lot of legacy, a lot of interesting Roman things. And the first of them, and very well preserved, are the Roman buffs. You know what buffs are, right? You take a buff in buffs. So uh, in buffs, in the city, in the center of England, you can see well preserved Roman buffs. Uh, they are a museum, you can go on a tour on a torchlit tour at night, in the evening or in the morning and explore and see how beautiful Roman architecture was. So it's not only in Italy and it's not only in Greece where you can see the antique architecture, it's also in Europe and actually quite offshore in, on uh, the island of Great Britain. So if you have a chance, go and see this, pla this place as well. Next one, we've got a pier. You know what a pier is? Okay, I'll show you a picture. A pier is like a structure that goes into the sea and you can walk along the structure and I know breathe the uh, 
ocean air. Like in Poland, we've got in Sopot a very famous beer, Mall of Sopot, right? So this is a similar thing, but this is very special because this is one of the uh, biggest constructions, not the longest, but biggest constructions in the world. And on this Brighton Pier, you also have a, like a little pavilion, which they call a castle. There are a lot of tourist attractions there, like uh, there is a fun fair, uh, there is a restaurant. It's a very interesting uh, place and it's one of the most important landmarks. And if you go to the English seaside, you need to go to Brighton and see the Brighton Pier. Okay, next we've got Eden Project, which is in Cornwall. Maybe you've heard about of it because it's often mentioned in English textbooks that we use uh, for learning uh, the language. Uh, you have domes. Domes are those uh, kind of structures made of uh, glass. And in these domes, you can see natural plant, plants and uh, various uh, trees and flowers from all around the world. And uh, there is a microclimate, so you can see tropical uh, plants there. You can see some plants from uh, remote places in the east, in the west, in the north. It's a very interesting place and it serves uh, as a kind of, uh, I would say, nature's museum. You can go and explore it, uh, you can visit it and uh, you don't have to travel to uh, the Tropic of Capricorn uh, to see tropical plants. Okay, the next, and the next part of the United Kingdom is Scotland. Okay, if you look at the first picture here, I'm not sure if you can see well, but here we've got the lion, the lion is the English symbol, and here we've got the unicorn. You wouldn't have guessed that the unicorn is actually a symbol of some country. It is a symbol of Scotland. Why is it a symbol of Scotland? Because apparently a unicorn is a natural enemy to the lion. That's why it represents the spirit of Scotland because Scotland fought for a long time to be independent of Britain. They failed, but their history of struggle for independence is really, really long. And I'm going to mention it maybe some, uh, like in a month or so when I'll be talking about history. Okay. And now next thing, I'll put some lines here. This is a song, actually a very famous song, and I'm sure you know it. It's a Scottish song, a uh, Scottish tune. And the lyrics for this tune are written by a, by, a, by a very famous Scottish poet. It's like Mitzkevich for us by Robert Burns. And uh, this is a song uh, which is entitled Old Lang Syne. This is a song we sing and people in the world sing uh, on the New Year's Eve. I'm sure you've heard it. I can't sing it. Don't force me. But you can Google it and check the tune because I'm sure you know it. Then we've got uh, the Cross of St. Andrew. And also here, this thing you probably know, right? Okay, this is Nessie, a very famous monster who uh, apparently uh, lives, uh, lives in uh, the Loch Ness uh, Lake. Okay, then we've got the thistle, which I showed you before. Uh, oh, where is my thistle? Okay, so it's here, like thistle, that's nearly the same, okay? So this is the symbol, a uh, plant symbol of Scotland and uh, a beautiful view of the uh, Scottish capital, Edinburgh, with the castle on top. So let's recapitulate. So the capital of Scotland is Edinburgh. Population of Scotland is much smaller than the population of England, if you can see. It's uh, 5,454,000 people. The highest peak of uh, Scotland is Ben Nevis, which is also the highest peak of uh, the whole of the United Kingdom. It's not a very big mountain, I'll show you later. Uh, the motto is, no one provokes me with impunity. Uh, I'll translate it. Nikt nas nie provokuje uh, bezkarnością. So, everybody should be punished for what they do wrong. That's the motto. Patron saint is St. Andrew. And look at this. The national date is of the 30th of November. Why? You can actually really uh, relate to it because in Poland we celebrate Andrzejki on this very day, right? So this is, there is a connection between uh, the date and the name. And animal symbol is unicorn, which I told you about. Plant symbol is a thistle, and I also told you about it before. Okay, and the famous places in Scotland. What do we have there? First, we've got a very famous wall. This is this structure, which is like really, really long. I'll show you how long it is. It's here. Okay. This structure is called Hadrian's Wall. 
and it was built in 122, uh, 122 AD by Emperor Hadrian's people. Uh, it was built to protect the Roman Empire from the attacks by the ferocious and fierce Scots, uh, the tribe of Picts or Iceni. Uh, they used to attack uh, the Roman Empire and they didn't want uh, the Roman rule, uh, so they attacked a lot. And this wall was big enough to stop their attack with horses. So look at this, it's like a China wall, the Great Wall of China. We've got here the Great Wall between England and Scotland and uh, it's worth to, uh, to remember this information and it is also not the only wall in Scotland, we also have another wall which was built later on, Antoine's wall in uh, 142 AD and it was also supposed to keep the ferocious Scots out of the Roman Empire. So as you can see the Scots are really wild at heart and everybody is afraid of them uh, they have a very unique spirit and if you think about England, you think that the English people are calm and reserved, the Scottish people are the opposite. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one, the Edinburgh Castle, uh, which is a royal residence, so it's actually Queen's, Queen's property. Uh, she loves Scotland and she goes there, uh, she visits this place and it's also well, very well preserved, you can see uh, a lot of interesting artifacts there. There is a virtual tour online so you can go and check it out. And this is the mountain we spoke about. This mountain is called Ben Nevis. It's in the north of Scotland. It's not very big because it's about 1,400 uh, 1, meters uh, above the sea level. I'm not sure exactly. It's 1,300 1, 1, something. I don't remember exactly, but that's the, the important thing. And this is the mountain that is actually the biggest mountain in the UK. So you can see the peak is here. Uh, it's got a different shape. Uh, than the, those peaks that we have in Poland, like the Tatra Mountains, which are like very spiky. This one is kind of flat. Uh, you can go on a tour there. It's not a very uh, challenging mountain. It's a nice uh, trek. Okay, another one is Loch Ness. Loch Ness became famous because of the sighting of the Nessie, of the monster which lives in Loch Ness. Uh, it's a uh, glacier uh, lake. It's very long and very deep and the funny thing is that the whole hoax of Nessie was created by actually a scholar, a person who, is a, who was a scientist. He, uh, he, um, he prepared these pictures and he uh, made people believe that he has got uh, pictures of a uh, step, uh, of, uh, how, you can't say like footprints, but some kind of prints, right? And uh, so he convinced people that Nessie actually lived there. And uh, it's not true. Maybe there is some big fish there, but there is really no monster. But uh, it's worth to remember that in Loch Ness, you've got uh, currents, strong currents, current is prone. You've got strong currents. And sometimes these currents have different shapes. So people may mistake these currents for some monsters. And people still hunt for Nessie. Okay, and this is an important thing, and I tell you why, because this appeared in a competition, I think two years ago, or last year. It's Carabray, it's a Neolithic village, the rem remains of a Neolithic village, which have been discovered uh, on the Orkney Islands, and uh, now it is a kind of an open air museum, so you can go and see it. It's, it's, they are one of the oldest uh, uh, remains of the civilization on the British Isles. So remember, Scarabray on the Orkney Islands, Neolithic village remains. Okay, the next country is Wales. Wales is, uh, has been under the English rule for the longest time. And here we've got the flag of Wales and also the symbol, the animal symbol. Red dragon of Wales on uh, white and green background. And then we've got another symbol which stands for Welsh people being very musically talented, a harp, okay, actually it's called a Welsh harp, so you can check it out, and two symbols, which are, uh, which are plant symbols, we've got, the, there's daffodil, jonquil, right, this is daffodil, and also a leek, uh, I brought this leek, so I hope now you can uh, tell me why I brought it here. Uh, those are some uh, pictures of Cardiff, which is a really nice place. And uh, what I'd like it, what I like to mention is that in Wales you get a, to see a lot of interesting castles and very well preserved medieval castles. Uh, this is what Wales is famous for. 
Wales is also famous for its language and uh, the longest possible words in the world. Like there's that long word, which is a name of a village. So you can check it out. And in Wales, you have, in Wales, you have to put all the signs, all the um, information for tourists, for people in two languages, in English and in Welsh. You can see it here. It's, it absolutely doesn't even remind English and I can't pronounce it and I can't say it. Okay. I remember that it was a nightmare when I had the history of uh, the United Kingdom, the Great Britain. Uh, we had to pronounce some names in Welsh and it was horrible. Okay, and here we've got, as I mentioned, we also have some other symbols, like here you've got uh, a flag of St. David, which is the patron saint of Wales, and here we've got this dragon, this is a heraldic emblem uh, of, the, uh, of this country, mm, so uh, it's also on the flag. So what, you can, what we can, um, let's like recapitulate of, uh, what I've said. So first, the capital is Cardiff, remember this. Population is smaller than Scotland, 3,161,000 people. The highest peak is Snowdon and the whole area of Snowdon, it's called Snowdonia and it's a national park. Uh, motto is Wales forever, Valia na zawsze. Okay, patron site is St. David. Uh, national day is the 1st of March. Animal symbol is a dragon and plant symbols, there are two, leek and daffodil. And let's look at famous places. So first, as I said, we've got Mount Snowdon, which is the biggest mountain in, in Wales. Uh, it's, I think it's more similar to Tatra Mountains, to our mountains. It's not so flat and rounded. Then we've got one of the castles. Uh, there are loads of castles in Wales. They are really beautiful and well-preserved medieval castles. This is a huge castle, uh, Carnforth Castle in north of Wales, you can visit it. Uh, it's by the sea, by the bay, and uh, it's really, really uh, well preserved, not destroyed at all, and it's still owned by the crown. Tenby, okay, look at this picture. If you saw this picture online without any caption, would you have thought that it's actually somewhere in the north? I don't think so. So this is, look, it looks like Italy like Ischia or like uh, Cinque Terre, right? So it's a very beautiful bay. It's got colorful buildings. Uh, it's a very famous uh, tourist place, uh, nice to see. And as you can see, the water of the ocean goes away uh, and there's the tide. So it's also interesting to go on the beach there. Okay, uh, this is the Welsh name, which I'm not going to pronounce. It's a viaduct. Okay, and the last country of the United Kingdom is Northern Ireland. Let's quickly go through that. So first, we've got the cross of uh, St. Patrick, which is the flag. Then we have the red hand, which symbolizes uh, Northern Ireland. We have shamrock. It's uh, a plant symbol of Ireland, and it's connected with this patron saint, St. Patrick, who used this plant to explain to the Irish people why God has three persons, right? So he used this plant to represent God, okay? Then we've got the name, the nickname of Northern Ireland, which is Ulster. Uh, that's how, the people call, uh, how people call it. And some nice pictures of Belfast, which is the capital city. So let's summarize. So capital is Belfast. Population is smaller than that of Wales. It's uh, nearly two million people. Nickname is Ulster. The largest lake is Loch Nee. Patron saint is St. Patrick. National day is the 17th of March. A symbol is the red hand and plant symbol is shamrock. Uh, and let's go to some famous places. So the first place, which is really beautiful, is the giant causeway. It's a big structure on the coast, uh, which uh, it looks like church organs a bit. It's got the great pillars. Uh, stone pillars and there is also legend about the fact that the giants built it uh, so we can read about it maybe in the future but it's a nice nice place to know the giant causeway is a landmark of northern ireland the more mountains which are also very uh, nice and they remind me a bit of our mountains 
Strangford Castle, and I put it here because it is the location of Winterfell. Do you, uh, did you watch Game of Thrones? Uh, like nearly all the people in the world uh, have seen this uh, series. So this is the location of Winterfell. So St Strangford Castle becomes Winterfell. And with a bit of help uh, of special effects, it becomes this castle. And let's talk about the United Kingdom as a whole. So, as I mentioned, we've got four countries in the United Kingdom, right? But these countries are kind of under one rule. So, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is Boris Johnson. The head of state, so the most important person who actually only has a representative role is Queen Elizabeth II, who, by the way, rules the longest uh, of all the British monarchs. Uh, then you've got the double-decker Busby, which stands as a symbol of the United Kingdom and the Westminster Parliament, which is the Parliament for England. But you have to remember that there, are, there is also a Parliament in Scotland, in Wales. Uh, they also have their say, okay, in the politics. And also what I'd like to mention is that uh, Elizabeth II is the head of church. So church is kind of dependent on the government, on the uh, state. Uh, she is the head of uh, the English church, but there is also Scottish church, which is called the Kirk, and she's not the head of that. Okay? And the funny thing about her is that she holds the title, the defender of the faith, Obron Saviare, Fide Defensor, uh, given her by the Pope, although the Pope is Catholic, not Protestant. Uh, this title has a long history of 500 years, and uh, this title uh, was given uh, to the British King Henry VIII uh, by the Pope uh, for his good work for Catholicism, which is funny because actually this King Henry VIII broke with Rome and created his own Church of England. Okay, so population of the whole of the United Kingdom is 67,886,000 people. Capital of all of it is London. The longest river is the Severn. The highest peak is Ben Nevis. Currency, so the money is pound sterling. Languages are English, Scots, also Scots, Welsh, Cornish, Irish, Scottish, Gaelic. Political system is constitutional monarchy, which means there is a king, but there's also a parliament. The head of state is the queen. Prime minister is Boris Johnson. And they drive on the left, which you know. Okay, the last but not least is the, is the Republic of Ireland, which is quite different from the United Kingdom, although, uh, it's not far from it. Uh, first of all, the uh, Republic of Ireland has a president, so it's not the Queen who is the head of state here. Uh, also, the symbol is like, uh, in the Welsh case, a harp. Uh, the capital city and the biggest city is uh, Dublin. Here you've got a leprechaun, which you probably know from Harry Potter books, if you've read them or watched some films. So a leprechaun is like a gnome. Uh, who brings good luck and you can see the rainbow there. It means that at the end of the rainbow a leprechaun, leprechauns hide pots of gold, money, so you should also always follow the rainbow to get some money and luck. And uh, here this picture with a uh, cliff uh, are the cliffs of Mohar which are a landmark of this country. So population is nearly 5 million. Nickname is Erie. Mind it, Northern Ireland or Ireland was Ulster, uh, Republic of Ireland is Erie, capital is Dublin, longest river is River Shannon, highest peak is Caranto Hill, currency is Euro, not pound, languages are Irish and English, political system is Constitutional Republic, head of state is President Michael de Higgins, which I showed you a picture before, Prime Minister is M Michael Martin, and they also drive on the left, which you may not know. Okay, and what are the famous places? First of all, we've got Cliffs of Moher, uh, very beautiful cliffs that you can, uh, that are um, kind of uh, the most important uh, natural feature of the island of Ireland. New Grange, uh, which is a big burial site, like a big graveyard with tombs inside. You can go and visit them, it's very, very old. Blarney Castle, which is famous for a very important stone. Uh, in this castle there is a stone which you must kiss when you visit because if you kiss this Blarney stone you become eloquent and intelligent and you speak really nice. Okay. Then Ben Belbin on Ben Belbin, there are a few spellings of that. This is a mountain which looks a little bit like Uluru or Ayerstock mountain in Australia. 
Okay, it's nice to know that there, we also have something like that in Europe. And last, last but, not, but not least is the one of the oldest breweries in the world and the most famous breweries. Brewery is a place where they make beer, a very famous Guinness beer. Okay, so if you have some time, go online, explore and learn some more about the English countries, English speaking countries. Okay, and next, uh, in two weeks, we're going to talk about the rest of them. Thank you. Thank you. Podróż po krajach anglojęzycznych oprowadziła i przewodziła tej podróży pani Aleksandra Kowalska. Dziękuję serdecznie. To była oczywiście lekcja języka angielskiego w Kujawsko-Pomorskiej Szkole. Do zobaczenia, do usłyszenia.